Hi everybody, this is Lara with your end of the week video analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday the 1st of February 2019. The target for more upward movement is at 2804 for Elliott Wave or 2881 for Classic Analysis, but I think that's a bit optimistic. At about one of those targets I'll be expecting a large pullback for a second wave at primary degree. For the short term, only if we see a breach of the Black Elliott channel on the daily chart and then a new low below 2631.05 would I revise that outlook and say that the pullback has already arrived. Let's take a look at the Elliott wave count at the weekly chart level. My wave count sees a super cycle fifth wave beginning in March 2009 and it's unfolding as an impulse. Within the impulse here's the end of the second wave, it subdivides as a combination, it's a time consuming structure and it's relatively shallow. Here's the end of the third wave, it subdivides as an impulse. Here's a fourth wave, it's a double zigzag, it's relatively deep. Double zigzags are usually quicker structures than combinations. Now I know that the proportion in terms of time between 14 weeks and 62 weeks between cycle waves 2 and 4 is grossly disproportionate. That's okay in this case because the distance that in terms of price that cycle 4 travelled gives it a proportional look to the sideways structure of the second wave and there's perfect alternation. I know also they're both labelled WXY but they are actually quite different structures. Elliott wave corrective structures belong in two broad groups. There's the sideways family and the zigzag family, which have a strong slope. Double combinations belong to the sideways family, and this is a double zigzag belonging to the zigzag family. They are different structures. Within cycle wave 5, no second wave correction may move beyond the start of its first wave below 2346.58. I've drawn an Elliott channel around super cycle wave 5 from the end of cycle wave 1 which is off to the left of the chart and I've given you that date and price point for the weekly candlestick in the text analysis so you can replicate this to the end of cycle 3, place a parallel copy on the end of cycle wave 2. This almost absolutely perfectly shows us where cycle wave 4 found support. This was finally the channel to show us where downward movement found support and that adds a little bit of confidence that this is finally the right wave count. Let's take a look at how cycle wave 5 is beginning at the daily chart level from this low, this point down here. At this stage it looks like there's an incomplete impulse unfolding, 1, 2, 3, triangle for 4 and a final fifth wave. My Elliott wave target is for intermediate wave 5 to equal quality and length with intermediate 1 at 2804. I've revised the degree of labelling this week, I've moved up 1 degree because if we see primary 1 ending here, then primary 2, 3, 4, 5, that would see a reasonable amount of movement allowed up toward the final target at 3045. The bigger picture also, actually I'm quickly going to go back to the weekly chart because this is important so I'll draw your attention to it again. Cycle wave 3 has no Fibonacci ratio to cycle wave 1 but very importantly it's shorter than cycle wave 1. Because a core Elliott wave rule states a third wave may never be the shortest, when a third wave is shorter than the first wave that means that the fifth wave is limited to no longer than a quality of length with the third wave. That limit here for cycle 5 is at 3447 I believe. Ok let's go back to the daily chart, that's important. And so that target or that limit for cycle 5 at 3447 is above the target for cycle wave 5 to reach 0.618 the length of cycle wave 3. Now normally the most common Fibonacci ratio for a fifth wave is one of equality with the first wave but in this instance because cycle 5 can't be that long it would violate a core Elliott wave rule I'm looking at a Fibonacci ratio to cycle wave 3 and I'm looking for cycle 5 to be shorter in length than cycle 3. Now that means it's also likely to be shorter in time and that's one reason why I'm looking for October this year for a possible end to this bull market. At this stage let's focus on the end of primary wave 1 and then we'll be looking for a deep pullback for primary 2 but don't necessarily expect it to be very deep. Second wave corrections for this particular market aren't actually always that deep. This one here for intermediate wave 2 is relatively shallow. At the hourly chart level here's the end of the triangle for intermediate wave 4. If we see it ending here then it all has a really good fit. And this could be an impulse for minor wave 1 and now minor wave 2 could be unfolding as an expanded flat correction. They're reasonably common structures. They subdivide 3, 3, 
5 and the B wave of an expanded flat moves beyond the start of the A wave. And so minor wave 2 may end about the 0.236 Fibonacci ratio of minor wave 1. Look for minute wave C to move at least slightly below the end of A to avoid a truncation. As soon as that happens, we could see minor wave 2 over. If it's deeper than that, look out for strong support at the lower edge of the Black Elliott channel, which I've copied over from the daily chart. If this trend line is broken, then I will go to the alternate wave count, but in the first instance, look out for support at this trend line. Minor wave 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 2631.05. If this trend line is broken by downward movement, then use this wave count. If I move the end of intermediate wave 4 from this low to this low, now from this low to this high, we could see a complete 5 wave impulse, which means intermediate 5 could be over here at the last high, which means primary wave 1 could possibly be over, and we could be looking out for a bigger pullback for primary wave 2. In order to have confidence in this idea though, we really do need to see this black Elliott channel breached by downward movement. If that happens, then the next price point or the price point to find confidence is 2631.05 because that would invalidate the main wave count. Now the problem with moving minor wave E up to here is that then it would be truncated. We'd label this A, B, C and C hasn't moved beyond the end of A so there's a truncation here. I've taken a look at the 5 minute chart to see how this could be labelled for minor wave 4 and it will fit actually as a double combination in here like lower time frames, so this is okay here. If primary wave 1 is over at this high, then within primary 2, no second wave nor B wave may move beyond its start above 2708.95. Let's take a look at how the week closed and some classic technical analysis. This weekly candlestick, upward movement for the week at this time frame, has support from volume. On balance volume breaks above resistance, giving us a bullish signal. This doesn't make any comment on how far or for how long upward movement should continue, but it's, it's a bullish signal. Next resistance above is quite strong, about 2800. RSI is neutral, there is still room for price to rise. ADX has not caught up yet with the trend change. There is a good strong bounce at this time frame though ADX is not telling us it's a new upward trend because ADX is declining. MACD this week gives us a bullish crossover at the weekly chart level. I don't usually give those much weight. I'll just make a note of that. At the daily chart level Thursday had a, quite a strong upward day giving me confidence in the targets but Friday sees a decline in volume and quite a small real body but it's not a reversal signal. Assume the trend remains the same until proven otherwise. It's a good mantra to follow if you're trading. Don't try and pick highs and lows, it's going to lead more losses to more losses on your account. Assume the upward trend will continue until we see signs of reversal. If we see a bearish candlestick reversal pattern, then I would call possibly for primary wave 1 to be over. It depends how strong the pattern would be. ADX is telling us that it there is an upward trend now at this time frame in its early stages. This is the strongest signal ADX can give when it comes from a low level and it rises up from below both directional lines. It's telling us that there is a new trend. There is a series of higher highs and higher lows. The basic definition of an upward trend. Assume it remains the same until proven otherwise. There's a small pennant pattern here. On the daily chart, pennants and flags are reliable continuation patterns. I'm taking the flagpole from the pennant from this low to this high, adding that distance to the breakout point from the pennant that gives me a target at 2881. That does look to be a little bit optimistic, but it's entirely possible, I suppose. We've gone over ADX. ATR is declining as price is rising. That's absolutely normal behaviour for this market, particularly of recent years. On balance volume at the daily and weekly chart level gives us a nice clear bullish signal supporting the Elliott wave count. RSI is neutral, there is still room for price to rise before this movement becomes extreme. MACD is full bore bullish. What about inverted VIX in the AD line? At the weekly chart level the AD line is giving us for the last three weeks in a row bullish signals. As Market breadth is rising faster than price. We read market breadth as a leading indicator where it leads price 
usually follows. The AD line is making new highs above these price swing highs here, yet price is not. I'll expect price to follow on through. Now that doesn't preclude a pullback and then more upward movement. So we could see primary one end a little bit sooner than expected maybe and then primary wave two begin and these bullish signals from the AD line could yet be seen, could yet still be followed through by new highs from price as well. At the daily chart level, we're seeing bullish signs from eight from the AD line. It's rising faster than price quite consistently. This is a very bullish look. And inverted VIX is also doing the same, but not quite as strongly as the AD line. Inverted VIX is making new highs above this prior high, but price has not managed to follow through yet. I read inverted VIX also as a leading indicator. And at the daily chart level, it's also doing the same thing. It's not as clearly bullish as the AD line, but it is overwhelmingly more bullish than it is bearish. Only three bearish signals here and a multiple number of bullish divergences which continue. That supports the Elliott Wave count. That's all for me this week with your Elliott Wave analysis for the S&P 500 and I hope that all of our members are having a most fabulous weekend.